Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll go through the five day precipitation and temperature from the UK Met Office run and we'll have a look at the longer range forecast with the GFS, GM, ESMWF and the ensembles and although we do have cold weather over the next few days it's going to turn milder for the start of the next working week and then by next weekend into the Easter weekend we could be seeing some quite dry and warm weather now it's still a good week away so there is a bit of uncertainty there but it does look like upper air temperatures will be above average and it does look like we'll have high pressure definitely in the south potentially for all as well so it could be quite a dry and warm easter nothing exceptional but temperatures could be getting back into the to the low 20s perhaps beyond that though there are signals once again of high pressure hanging around maybe giving more easterly flows setting things chillier again but we'll have to keep an eye on that uh, and at this stage the general trend is for warmer and drier conditions. So I'm hope, hopefully everyone is going to be looking forward to some of that. Just remember, if you enjoyed my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link's in the description. So to start on the live radar, you can see we do have a northerly flow at the moment. A very showery northerly flow. And you can see all the way across Europe and including the UK, a lot of quite heavy scattered showers. Now, the showers were much heavier yesterday across parts of England, but we still have seen some heavier pulses uh, develop. We did see a few thunderstorms yesterday with hail, some sleet and snow, and we're going to continue to see sleet and snow and hail within some of these showers as well. And especially in sort of the heavier cells, we're going to be seeing some hail, sleet and snow over the higher ground, more likely sleet and snow. And you can see across Scotland, there is snow falling over the highest ground. But of course, this air mass is cold. It feels chilly out there. The wind chill makes it feel like sort of mid single digits. But it's not as cold as it was a, a week or two ago, where we saw upper air temperatures getting down to minus, minus 10 at 850 HPA. Right now, it's minus 5, minus 6, so slightly warmer. Uh, and that means most of the showers are rain or hail or a little bit of sleet, growl pool and snow over higher ground. And these will continue over the course of the evening before they are slowly depleting over the next day or two as high pressure does move back in. But it's likely to bring more widespread frosts for the next day or two before before we see a milder push of air up from the southwest for uh, for the next working week but that's going to be interesting bringing warm moist air up from the south we could be seeing heavy rain for some especially further west which is close to the center of the low and the potential for seeing more widespread scattered thunderstorms which could of course bring some disruption with that but the uncertainty is quite significant with that so we do now have a look at the UK Met Office run. Now we're going to have to look at uh, the 3 o'clock run from yesterday evening um, because it hasn't updated unfortunately for the 3am uh, run. So we can only have to look at the 3pm run. So it's a little bit outdated by like 12 hours or so. But it's nothing uh, nothing too bad. It still will have the general gist because uh, in the next 3 or 4 days things don't particularly change too much. So you can see... Over the course of today, we've seen all these scattered showers developing, turning a bit wintry. UK Met Office run, not making too much of them once again. In reality, it's a little bit uh, more widespread than this run is making out to be. And we've seen that a little bit of a consistent signal over the last week or two. So perhaps that's something we need to keep an eye on as we head into more convective season in sort of yeah, the rest of April, May, June, July, uh, when we do start to see a lot more pop-up showers and storms. That is something we need to keep an eye on when we have a look at the UK Met Office run, perhaps underdoing it a little bit at times, especially with convection, because you can see for England and Wales, it does pop up the cumulus clouds a lot. You can see those whiter clouds building, but not developing anywhere near as widespread showers uh, as we have seen in reality. Now, as I said, over the course of the evening, those showers will fade away and we do have high pressure coming back in. So for many areas, clear skies, some showers still across Scotland, but for the far, uh, for, for many central areas, and east areas, clear skies, temperatures will plummet. But you can see out to the far west, more cloud is building in and weather fronts are approaching. And that is low pressure running in off the Atlantic, taking a bit of time to get in. Uh, but by Sunday afternoon, all areas will be under thicker cloud as those weather fronts start to approach. And the, the predominant amount of rain will be in the west, close to the centre of the high. But of course, we could see some showers and the weather fronts pushing eastwards as well. But as I said, within this, we're seeing a southerly airflow instead of a northerly airflow we've had recently. So although it will be cloudy 
for many, there will be quite a bit of rain in the west, on and off rain and heavier showers, it most likely will be quite warm as well. Now these showers do spread in and we see another little system develop, again further westwards. Real heavy thundery rain within this, perhaps a bit of Scot uh, snow over Scotland still hanging on to some of the colder air, and as that sh those showers move northwards you can see around a little spiral low pressure system, we start to see heavy showers potentially develop and you can see by Wednesday afternoon heavy thundery showers develop where we see a bit of sunshine that sun picking up the temperatures we could see yeah some heavy thunderstorms but you can see if we do run that back many areas further eastwards do stay out of the heaviest rain so definitely the east is favoured for better weather over the next week or so it's going to be turning milder for all but definitely favoured for better better conditions. So we do have a look at those two meter temperatures, see how those uh, do compare. Now you can see uh, over the course of this afternoon, we saw temperatures getting up to around 10 to 12 degrees, but feeling a good few degrees colder than that with the wind chill. Of course, this evening, as I said, going to be a widespread frost, widely down to uh, minus one, minus two degrees um, at the surface, maybe even minus three or four in some rural areas. Further westwards across parts of Ireland, it's going to be a little bit milder with that cloud building in. By Sunday afternoon, all areas starting to see cloud build in, maybe a degree or two milder with that northerly airflow sort of push, pushed away. And by Sunday evening, still potential for a bit of a frost across Scotland, but many areas much milder. And you can see by Monday afternoon, perhaps 15, 16 degrees in the east. Um, under the weather front, though, a little bit colder than that. And you can see, again, frosts are cut out widely, uh, maybe still just over Scotland. And by May, Tuesday afternoon... 16 to 18 degrees, quite mild upper air temperatures are coming in, um, but where we have rain it will be kept down into high single digits um, with that. And you can see by Wednesday uh, evening, uh, or Wednesday morning, real no chance of a frost really anywhere apart from northern Scotland. And you can see by Wednesday afternoon where those clouds um, do clear, and we do see clear skies, you see 16 to 18 degrees, quite warm, pleasant and muggy there. Um, and again, if we have a look at those upper air temperatures, you can see some quite warm push of upper air temperatures, 10, 12 degrees at 850 HPA for a good 12 to 24 hours there. Um, and that um, yeah, is going to bring sort of muggy conditions and fuel those uh, showers, rain um, and potentially a few thunderstorms as well. So we have to keep an eye on that. So we do now have a look at sort of the mid to longer range, have a look at the GFS first, this is the 6 o'clock run. Now the GFS has put a spanner in the works last few days, definitely favouring more colder blocked weather in the longer term, and again it's doing it today. So if we do run through, you can see that high pressure building in, and we see southerly winds, warm air coming up from the south, we see little low pressure systems develop within that for Tuesday and Wednesday, fueling showers and thunderstorms and that heavier uh, uh, area of rain through Tuesday and Wednesday, before high pressure does build in. But dissimilar to other runs, um, it builds it further northwards and we go into an easterly flow, quite a chilly easterly flow. And towards day 10, we go back into a really cold northerly flow. Now we're getting towards the second half of April, so it's not going to be that cold. There isn't that much cold air left over the Arctic. So it's just going to be colder than average. Enough, but, um, but still... Uh, will be widespread frost, low pressure running into it. it, could see more snow risk, especially further northwards, and it just stays really unsettled and cold with that jet stream along the black line here, um, well to our south into, into Europe, down into Spain and Portugal, so really quite bizarre from the GFS run. As we'll see with the ensemble members, it is a bit of an outlier, not a massive outlier, but a bit of an outlier, so you still have to keep an eye on it, um, but yeah, it's definitely not going along with what the other runs are showing. Still showing the high pressure trends but building it much further northwards and building in cold and northeasterly winds instead of keeping the air sort of stagnant over the top of us building a bit of warmth which is what the other runs are showing so you can see cold air prayer masses at the moment but those uh, pull away by sunday before we see a warm push of air up from the south beyond that you do see high pressure builds in but instead of seeing warm high pressure over the top of the uk for the easter weekend we're putting an easterly flow chilly not crazy cold but will be a little bit of a nip to the air a bit of a wind chill out there before you see another plunge of really bitterly cold air coming out of the arctic um all this cold air flooding towards the uk and northwest europe it doesn't last long because the sun's going to warm it up very quickly but it's going to be cold they're going to be widespread frosts again and towards the end of the run we stay on the cold side of the jet stream upper air conditions below average with the minus five line just over scotland there would be more snow over the scottish hills and mountains so yeah, very cold from this GFS run, pretty bizarre indeed, can't completely discount it, 
but I definitely think higher, warmer, 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 higher pressure over the top of the UK is more favoured than this below average conditions from the GFS operational run. Now, if we have a look at the GM run, which is by far the warmest run today, and we'll see it is really, really quite pleasant for the Easter weekend. Nothing crazy in terms of a heat wave or anything, but dry and warm um, conditions where you go out and enjoy the sunshine. So you can see high pressure, um, or sorry, high pressure moves in briefly before low pressure runs up with southerly winds high pressure builds in towards the end of the week into the weekend we see that high pressure building over the top of the uk instead of to our north and that, that easterly flow stays well out into eastern europe and we spring up more of a southerly flow and right towards the end of the run low pressure does start to break through but for the easter weekend we are pretty warm and dry with high pressure over the top uh, of the uk especially over the top in the south bringing things much much warmer now, if we have a look at those upper air temperatures, you can see cold at the moment, warmer push of air early this uh, early this coming week, and then high pressure built in with reasonably warm upper air temperatures, and you can see sort of between 5 and 10 degrees at 850 HPA quite widely would give really quite warm conditions towards the surface, and if we do run it back and just have a look at those temperature deviations, you can see nothing crazy, but a good 4 to 8 degrees above average, really quite warm and could be quite hot actually over the course of Spain um, and France and Portugal. And again, if we run it back, go into, uh, have a look at the United Kingdom look, have a look at those two meter temperatures. If we do run it back, uh, actually have a look um, at it more broadly, you can see by Friday, good Friday, we're seeing temperatures. Uh, temperatures running up to perhaps sort of 18, 19 degrees by 3 p.m. on Good Friday. Cold overnight with high pressure, so temperatures will be dropping, but by uh, Easter Saturday, um, you can see widely getting up towards 18, 19, 20 degrees, quite widely. And once again, for Easter Sunday, 18, 19, 20 degrees. And again, this is the broader map. If we do have a look sort of locally, uh, more microclimate, widely we would be seeing temperatures probably get up into the low 20s in a few spots. Um, and you can see it's warm pretty much everywhere, even to Northern Scotland getting into the mid teens. So looking very, very warm. And by Easter Monday, even warmer, widely, 18 to 20 degrees. And perhaps, as I said again, locally could be much, much warmer than that for the Easter weekend. So GM run definitely showing a warm um, and dry spell. And this is more on what most of the ensemble members are going for. So this is probably the favoured scenario at this stage. So we do have a look at the east of the Efron, see how that does compare. Again, northerly winds at the moment, but the southerly winds replace that by Monday, and we see quite unsettled conditions, but high pressure built over the top of the UK. Now we do start to see a bit of an easterly flow develop, but it doesn't come in anywhere as quickly as the GFS run does, and we continue under higher pressure, warm high pressure, for the Easter weekend. So wouldn't be quite as warm as the GM run, but definitely more along those lines. And if we do run it back and have a look at those upper air temperatures, you can see warm push of air for this coming working week, and then high pressure builds in, pretty warm upper air conditions, nothing crazy, getting towards potentially a couple of degrees above freezing, maybe towards 5 degrees at 850 HPA, um, generally above average, you can see that by the temperature deviation, 2 to 4 degrees above average, nothing too crazy, and then right towards the end of the run, perhaps turning things more into an easterly, but that is at day 10. So very uncertain for that. So both the GM and the ECMWF runs are going more in sort of it, 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 more towards a warmer, drier four-day Easter weekend. So not looking too bad indeed. As I said, uncertainty is there, but at this stage, it's not looking too bad. So we do have a look at the ensembles and see how those do uh, compare. Cold at the moment, turning much, much warmer by the start of the week, potentially towards 10 degrees at 850 HPA. And I wouldn't be surprised to be seeing low 20s in a few isolated spots through Tuesday and Wednesday. Isolated, I must say, though, because wherever we see cloud and rain, those temperatures will be held down in the low teens. So, yeah, very, very isolated with that, wherever we do see sunshine. But I wouldn't be surprised to see a widespread area of cloud break, perhaps in East Anglia or the generally eastern England, and that's where we see those temperatures really climb. We stay above average in terms of upper air temperatures all the way and through till Easter weekend. But you see by the Easter weekend, there is a bit of uncertainty. Those temperatures start to drop more towards average in terms of the mean of the ensemble members. And that's because we've got maybe a quarter of the ensemble members, which include the operational run, um, that go 
quite cold, getting towards a couple degrees below freezing at 850 HPA. So at the moment, the Easter weekend is just in that uncertainty range. You can see quite a few, the majority of the ensemble member state around average or well above average at 850 HPA, warm days, mid to high teens. And that does continue. We see, continually see quite a few cold on summer member runs, including the operation run. As I said, it's a bit of an outlier, but I'm not a huge outlier. There's a bit of support there, but the majority of the time we're around or above average all the way to around the 21st of April, where there becomes massive spread. Some going much warmer, some going much colder, and it's generally around average, maybe even slightly below average. So for the time being, in sort of the relevant time frame, next seven to 10 days, we do generally look above average, precipitation will be high this coming week in terms of shower activity and will be higher further westwards with more persistent rain but towards the easter weekend you can see in around the 16th to 19th of april things don't look too bad at all in terms of precipitation and we can emphasize that by having a look at the sea level pressure which is generally high for the easter weekend from 16th to 18th of april that sort of period is generally higher pressure so it's looking pretty decent and if we have a look at those two meter temperatures and precipitation you can see cold at the moment Early this coming week, perhaps getting towards 16, 17, 18 degrees, and that's sort of continuing. Perhaps towards the Easter weekend, you see a bit more of a drop off because we have some colder ensemble member runs, including the operational run, but a lot of those warmer runs are still getting up towards 15 to 20 degrees. And again, locally with microclimate, most likely we could see low 20s with some of these conditions. If we have a look at these ECMWF run, let's see how that does compare. Definitely, once again, on a milder sort of trends you can see cold at the moment turning much milder and staying well above average all the way to around the 20th of april once again some cold runs in around that easter period but nowhere near as many um as the gfs does so easter death run is definitely showing more of a milder trend we can't completely discount those cold runs but at this stage it is looking much uh, more likely we're going to see mild warm dry weather for easter weekend you can see again very very minimal precipitation considering there's only over 50 ensemble members for that easter period from around 15th, 16th, all the way to the 18th, 19th. It is pretty dry at this stage, and any of this will just be convective showers. No persistent rain looks likely at this stage. Longer term, similar to the GFS, will turn to around average with colder and milder runs, and we'll just have to keep an eye on that. And again, if we have a look similar to the GFS, have a look at those two meter temperatures for the Easter weekend. You can see cold over the next coming day, couple of days towards the middle of the week, getting up towards 15 to 20 degrees for most of the ensemble members, and that continues into the Easter weekend. A bit more uncertainty. The average could be up to maybe 13, 14 degrees, but we've got plenty of runs getting up towards 15 to 20 degrees. So we'll have to keep an eye on it, of course, at this stage. And if we do just briefly have a look at those, uh, the GM ensemble runs, see how that does, uh, that does compare if we do get it to to get it to load so you can see for the easter weekend the gm run is one of the milder runs within its ensemble members but for the majority of the time it's not a massive outlier it is generally along with majority of the ensemble members we don't normally look at the gm run because it's got quite a closed data set only 20 ensemble members so it is very much uh, quite uncertain especially beyond sort of five days so much better off having a look at the gfs and the easter F run but we can see Within its ensemble members, it's not a massive, massive outlier. And if we do have a look at those two meter temperatures, you can see GEM run showing very similar to its ensemble members, getting up to around 15 to 20 degrees, perhaps a little bit higher uh, locally as well. So you can see, it does look likely it will be warm and dry for the Easter weekend. I can't guarantee at this stage, but that's the most likely scenario. It doesn't look like it's going to be a heat wave at this stage. It will, if it does get up into the high teens, low 20s, it will be warm. It will be sort of a, a change from what we have had recently. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it does come off and we do see something quite pleasant for uh, for Easter weekend. So fingers crossed we do see it come off um, as, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to something a little bit drier and warmer. Because although it hasn't been a complete washout recently, it has been really quite chilly out there. Still need those winter coats um, and hopefully we can see a bit of a step change within the climate uh, and our weather over the next week or so, turning things a little bit warmer as we do head into, of course, late spring, early summer. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.